welcome to another episode of the Odd Couples. Oh, the, hold up. Let me correct that. Welcome to another episode of the Odd Couple of Real Estate. Odd Couple? Yeah, Odd Couple of Real Estate. See, again, this is our third show. We're still getting it together. But it's where your real estate success is our mission. It's yours truly, Mitch Tycoon, the undisputed king of wholesaling, your personal guru, guru for your personal and professional development here alongside... You know, I'm, I'm going to use this one today. My brother from another mother. Mr. Don DeRosa. Don, tell the people you're here with me. Let them know that I am not here by myself. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Great to be back for another show. I'm really, I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying these. Um, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of putting all this... I just want to do it. I right, just want right, to have right, fun right, with this right, show right, and right. tell people, keep it real and tell it like it is. If right. you like it, great. If you don't, tough shit. Right, right. Subscribe to another um, podcast or YouTube station or yeah. video or just don't watch it. But for those who do like the show, we got two things to ask of you. Number one, first of all, we'd like you to subscribe to the show, The Odd Couple of Real Estate. Number two, we're looking for names. Now, see, I came up with the name. Now, that's his music. That's his music. We're going to work on that. If you got an idea for the music, the intro music. But the real thing is, um, again. So you're saying you don't like my music? No, I didn't say I didn't like it. I'm just saying it could be better. I'm just saying it could be better. It could be it's better. It's got a lot better. of energy, yeah, though. It got, yeah, it got a lot of energy. It got a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I, but I knew you picked it. I knew you picked it. I, I just want them to know. I came up with a name. He pulled the music, and today's show is a Q and A session. Um, I was doing an IG and had all these, and I asked people for questions, and so that's what this show is about today. It's um, answering real estate questions, and uh, we're gonna go through each one of them, give our input on them. But one thing that you just said a moment ago, Don, uh, just for the record, this is off the cuff, and what I mean by off the cuff, this is not a over. Um, when I say prepare, we are prepared because we've been doing this over um, two decades of peace. But the thing is, it's, it's, it's not highly um, orchestrated as far as, okay, we got to have this, we got to have it's that. It's kind of like a reality show. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Where, a real know. reality show without yeah. the scripts. Without you know? the scripts. Right, right. Because we just want to give it to you raw and let you know how we really feel about a thing. We don't have to worry about um, our sponsors because we're being sponsored by the Odd Couples of Real Estate. Yeah. We're doing this out of our pocket. S self sponsor. Yeah, self sponsor. And two, we just really want you all to know what the real deal is about this business because this business has been so good to us in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a meaning of that we were able to um, live, live a dream life. and not, not that our life is over. Not that we're talking about $100 million. And that's what we want you to understand that it's not even about how much you make. It's, it's about the quality of life that you live. For me, that's all it is. It's quality of life. I mean, as long as I can afford what I want, Right. I'm good. Right, right, right. I'm good. Right. And this is for, for the young and for those who are seasoned out there, because so often, Don, at this time in, in, in our history, people are so caught up in looking at everybody else and, and, and the comparison. When we was coming up, they said, you know, compare yourself to the Joneses. Yeah. But now you got IG, you got Kim Kardashian, you know, more people are worried about, what, is Brady going to retire? The, gender, the other Jenner girl, uh, what's her name? Kylie. Yeah, Ky yeah, Kylie yeah, Jenner. Yeah, yeah. she's she, she she made a billion already. Well, their family was already being watched already. Yeah. So we got to understand that. So don't think you're going to create a makeup line, you're going to make a billion dollars because you created a makeup line. They already had millions of people watching them because it was on national yeah. TV. But that, and we're not knocking them. I just want to, no, I you just, know, hey, I just want you to have the right perspective. It, there's a of, million ways to make a million dollars in right. this business, in oh, any right. business. I mean, you just got to figure out what is good for you. Right. And be willing to put in the time also yeah. to build it up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this is Q&A. And so that's the other thing. If you have questions that you would like us to answer about any area of real estate, because again, it ain't just about us, it's about our network. If we don't have the answer, we I promise you, we're one or two calls away from getting the answer if it's something that's outside of our wheelhouse of, um, not, of our knowledge base. And lastly, what we share with you is not theory, it's practicality. These Absolutely. are time proven. These are things that we have done. You have two individuals sitting before you that you're listening to or watching that um, ha that have done and do this business right now. By the way, Don, how many um, rehabs you got going on right now? Oh. Um, he I came you, in today th arguing with Home Depot about products. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask me how many deals I've done, and no. I don't know the answer to that. Right. Um, right now, I think we have, I don't know, two or three. 
Okay, okay. And that's kind of slow for you all. I mean, that's yeah. low. I know it's new. I mean, the start of a new uh, year. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll have uh, one of these shows. We'll have bring Chrissy in. Okay, okay. Have her show up, but um, Chrissy and I are business partners in in on my side of the business, right, and right. she likes the rehab side. Although I do too. I mean, I've been doing rehabs forever, but right. she has a real kind of passion for it. Right, right. So um, she, I just let her do that thing, and she loves it. And so right now we have one going on in Buford. Uh, we have one. We have two new builds. Not exactly sure when they're going to start happening, but I think they're happening soon in near uh, Lake Lanier. Okay. And then we have another one somewhere else. I don't even know where that's at. So. Okay, okay. And see, that's when you get money. You know, you got stuff going on. You don't know where it is. You just oversee the projects. Or you just put the money in. Yeah, well, I and, mean. Uh, see, see, he, he might be there. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's what I do. That's what I do. You know, but uh, Don be all like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, I just, honestly, Chrissy handles them and she calls me and we go over it and I handle other aspects. Like we do, a, we have an education side and right. a real home buying side, right? right I mean, right. one of the things that I think differentiates us between others is, you know, we're educators, but we also do what we say. Right. Do what we teach. Yeah. Right. So... I think that's an important element that people need to understand is when you're when you're trying to learn from someone, there's lots of people out there that have done this business and they know what they're talking about, but they haven't done it. And I can I can pick them out in a New York second because what they talk about up front isn't what's happening in reality. It was ten years ago or right. fifteen years ago or whatever. Right. Then I, I know right away that they're full of shit. Right, right, right. And, and, and again, again, that's a, that's a great point. I shouldn't say that. That's a bad. That, no, 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 no. I shouldn't no, no, say that. No, no, that, no, no. You're speaking the truth. We said we're gonna keep it real, right? Well, I mean, I don't really want to say they're full of crap, but, but they are. But but they're just all, not. They're just not current. Right. Let's right. let's be real. They're just not current. Right. And now some things that's are foundational uh, when it comes to the educational um, system. Even like one of these questions right here: Does bandit signs? So we, we're getting into the the content. But again, again, please send your questions to us. You can follow me on IG at I am Mr. Tycoon, so you can inbox me there. You can send me an email at Mr. Tycoon and Mr. Tycoon if you have questions. Um, and that new site you just put up, can they send questions to it? What's the site? Sure, it's uh, expertrealestatecoaching.com. That's, a, that's a, a, a website that you go to. You can join. It's free. And you can ask all the questions you want. A lot of content. A lot of content. Tons of content. And then when you're ready to take the next step, you can join a, a private group. And we coach you for a whole year. We hold your hand through the whole process. Everything. It okay. gives you tons of education behind it. It's probably one of the best, if not the best in the country. Okay. You heard it here first on the Odd Couple of Real Estate. So the first question. Well, this actually was a second question, but it kind of brings up this point. Does bandit signs work? Yes. Okay. Everything works if you do. Okay. So everything works if you, if you do. Now... Um, we're talking about different times and ages. But is that uh, what you want me to end with? Is no, no, yes no, 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 no. That, that's that's the first part okay. because they do work. I believe they work, so we're both in agreement on that. And and it just and just for those who listen, we have different opinions about certain things. But um, and there's certain things we're gonna agree upon. So it's not one of them shows that okay, well he gonna always be the negative one. He gonna be the mean one. He gonna be the loud one. We're just sharing sharing our insights on it. Um, and the reason I say that, because we just talk about, you know, old school versus new school, somebody doing 20, since, um, 20 years ago. I still do bend the signs. I still put out maybe 100, 200 a, a month. And the last several um, months, maybe almost like the last year, the um, they haven't been taking them down because I believe because of COVID. But they're not, they haven't been getting hit like they were 20 years ago before we had text marketing, before we had all this technology. Well, I, I remember a time... In, well, I mean, we're in Georgia. I don't know where you're listening from, but if you're listening in Georgia, in the Atlanta area, uh, I remember a time when I first started this business and I would put bandit signs out and I'd put a hundred out over a weekend, every weekend. And you would steer clear of like Gwinnett County because right. they had like... Or Dugsville. Or, yeah, or they had, you know, they had the sign Nazis, literally. They would go and they would take them down and put them in the back of the truck or in their trunk, and then they would take a picture. And send it to you. And send it to you. And they had a code enforcement guy, officer, on their, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, their vigilante mission. Right. 
And every so often you'd get this email or you'd get this phone call or you'd get a picture right. of all your signs. And you spent hundreds of dollars on signs. Next thing you, and 10 minutes later, you see them all on the back of a truck. And they were quite proud of that. Right. And, 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 I, and, I, and again, you know, it's all like playing cards. I'm going to one-up you. You know, I got probation in Douglasville. I did know that. You told yeah, me that. Man. Yeah, I got probation. I had to go to court and everything. And I'll tell that story another time. But um, I will say steer clear of those counties that are, are very strict on it. And here in Atlanta, the Douglasville is one of them. East Point's another one, as you said. Gwinnett, DeKalb County used to be bad. They're not as bad anymore. Well, the other thing, too, I don't know. what I don't know. Did you put them up so high? That's what happened in Douglasville. It was so high that they yeah. had to call the bucket on the uh, bone yeah. company and, to get it down. And here's the thing. If you make it really difficult for, for them, code enforcement to take them down, right. You're That's gonna where the piss heat come off. from. You're gonna piss them off, okay. and they're just gonna, they're just gonna nail it to you, like yeah. you nailed your sign to the <laughs> yeah. To the so boat. if you just put them, uh, you know, normal where somebody can come along and just scoop them up, yeah, they don't stay out as long, but you also don't have the hassle. Right. Okay. So that brings me to another question. That they, so so signs still do work in today's time. They're not as. Um, effective as they were in the past, but I believe that's going to come back because you still see politicians put them on. That's another sidebar that I have. You know, yeah. it's not illegal for them to put them on. Yeah, I have an issue But it's a code that. enforcement against that. But the thing, the question is, I know a lot of people taught, they still probably teach, put them out on the weekend, put them out on Friday, pick them up on Sunday. Yeah. I'll put mine on telephone poles. They stayed up. It was just cost of business. What is your take on these? Put them out on the weekend, pick them back up. Somebody yeah. today's time, 2022. Yeah, I would teach... And I would do, because uh, I'm a, I what I teach you I do. Mm -hmm. So for the longest time I would put them out and just leave them out. Okay. And if I knew for ex an, a county for example that just left them out, mm -hmm. then that's what I would do because the longer they're out, the cheaper it is for you and the better it is for you. Right. But some places like Fulton County or Gwinnett County where I would literally go and I would pay a company. And they would go out on a Friday afternoon and they'd put all the signs. And what they would do is they would put this, you know, you don't use those H signs. You know what I'm talking you about? Use a H stake. Sign. Yeah, yeah. You use a stake, right? And if you take the little extra effort and on the sign, if you had a sign, I'll see if I can show you. If this is your sign, on the back side of that sign, you would cut another little pocket. Little pocket and you would put a stick in there, right? So that it would sit, it would literally sit in that stick. So the person that would go put the signs out, they'd put the stick in there and then they'd sit the sign on top of that in that little pocket. Well, then they would leave the sticks because nobody cares about the sticks apparently. Right. And they would just come and take the signs down and then they would go back on next Friday and put the... Put no, the I know two decades of business, I've never known anybody to do that. So you can learn something new every day because what we were doing is putting ours up on the, on, on the telephone poles. Actually, I got a, a, a pole over there one of my guys made so you can hang them up higher. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we do that too. I mean, we have a little, little looks like a little nail gun or a little yeah. staple gun, and it's on a pole, and you can do that. But I'm going to go back and tell you, the higher you make them... The, the harder it is for the code enforcement. The harder it is for the code enforcement to come take them down. The harder they're going to be on you. And they're going to they're gonna come after you. That's a no, possibility. No question. That's a possibility. It is so a possibility. So be careful. Be careful. Be <laughs> it careful. is a possibility. So, to that person who asked that question, there you go. Moving on to our next... Will people give you a house, and what is it called? So I guess they heard somebody talking about this subject to subject, probably. Not where you live, only where I live. Okay, it only works where you it live. It only works where I live. <laughs> so, so, will people so, give you a house? Yes, the answer is most definitely. Okay, and what is it called? You know, it's, it's called subject to. Okay. Right, you can do it, but they will give you a house on owner finance, too, meaning there's... So it's, so it's more than one... There's way. more than one technique. Okay. There's more than one technique. The most popular one that people talk about all the time is subject to. When you buy a house subject to. And what that means is you buy a property. Let me. Uh, you buy a property where somebody literally gives you the deed. They sign over the deed. So, for example, if you own your home and you're in distress, because right. those are the people that are going to be typically doing that, I would come in and say, I can buy it subject to the existing financing. You'll have to convey the deed to me or convey title to me and we'll utilize the existing financing temporarily until we get it sold. So what I just said to you is you're going to deed over the property to me. So you're going to sign over your ownership and then I'm just going to make your payments. Now I know a lot of you are listening. You're going, 
well, what about the due on sale clause? Is that legal? Can you do that? Will the banks let you do that? And the answer is, yes, it's legal. The banks won't, inside each security instrument across the country, there's different security instruments. There's deed of trust states, there's security deeds, which is Georgia, and then there's mortgage states. And each of those documents, when a, when a mortgage company puts a lien on the property, and that's what that does, puts a secured interest on that property, inside that is what they call a due on sale clause. And it basically says the bank may add its option called the loan due full and payable. May add its option. May it didn't say its, will. It didn't say will. And those of you, because I've had attorneys or students go to attorneys and try to close, and they said, you can't do that. And that is absolutely complete a false statement, a complete false statement. Because if you look at the old HUD statement, the, the, when you do a closing statement, I don't even, I'd have to look up what line number it is. It'll actually say on there, subject to. There's a line on there that says taking over subject to. So it's not illegal. And that just because you do that, it doesn't mean the bank will call it due. It just right. means they can. can call it due. And I've been doing this a long time. Uh, 25 years, can't tell you how many I've done. It's many. Right. Never once have had one called due. Now that, I say that, and that people are going to, there's going to be hate out there on the comments. I'm sure someone's going to say, you're giving, that doesn't mean a bank can't call it due. That just means I haven't had the experience. And every time I've heard someone that has had it called due, they've done something, if I dig deeper, they've done something stupid. Right, right. And, and again, it, Again, every situation um, is different. And again, I haven't known of anyone who has got one call due. That's in my immediate circle. And as we said, we both have over 20 years of experience. So that's what it's called. And I'm sure it's. I'm sure that's happened. Yeah, but again, we got to understand this. And let's understand the psychology of a bank. Banks want payments, not houses. That's right. That's right. That's and most time, these houses that we take over subject to aren't, aren't the ones that have the most equity left in the house. Uh, so we're not buying, most of the time we're not taking over a house that only have, that is a $300,000 house and they only owe $150,000 for it. It's more so they owe two forty dollars or $300,000. Yeah, the, the argument I hear a lot is, well, what happens if interest rates climb to 15%? We don't care, because we, we're looking at the payments. Okay, so what happens if the world ends tomorrow? Right. You know, should I be living in fear? No, I'm going to deal with it. And what, we teach you a lot of things to... Like, I'm going to teach you, if you're going to take over a property subject to, you can't take over a property that has a high loan-to-value ratio. Right. If you, if you take over a property that's below 80 or 75% loan-to-value ratio, if, you ha if for some reason, God forbid, they call it due, what's the worst thing that could happen? You put it out there on the market, you sell it for a discount, you get rid of it quickly, and you're out from under it. Right. That's the worst thing that could happen. All right. So that answers that question. Do you like hard money? I'm going to answer that first. No, I do not like hard money. I've used it one time, I believe, in my investing career. I've all, I heard about private money. We're not going to teach a class on private money today. But um, I don't like hard money because I've seen so many people get hurt with using hard money. And it has actually changed even um, more dramatically than it was when I first came into the business where you bring $5,000 to the table, everything was done. Now they want 20%. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your kids, your, your, your blood pressure, you know, your social, your social security of your kids. And it's just too many hoops for that. I think people have to jump through. And that's why I really love teaching wholesaling first. So you get your money up so that you can move to that. Um, but it is an option. It's just not one of my preferred well, methods. Here's what I tell people. Okay. It's, it goes, and I know one of the questions is you got on there your, is the Burr method, and we'll get yeah. to that in a minute. But yeah. I tell people hard money is a great option. Okay. It is. But you should have experience. It's like if I give you a gun, shouldn't you know how to use that gun before you go wielding around? Wielding around? Right. The answer is yes. Make sure they're so, responsible. Uh, so, skill is there. Exactly. So you have to have a certain amount of abilities, skill. skills, to make sure that it's successful. So hard money is great. 
if you can afford it. Right. Just, and if it's not your first rehab. And I think that's what my turnoff has been when I see yeah. new investors. They think the rehab going to go just as yeah. the contractor said, which they're using their uncle or their best friend's friend. And they don't. They haven't experienced somebody running off with that money. Well, yeah, and and let's pretend for a second. I don't know the first thing about it, and I'm a brand new investor. I'm going to go get hard money. The hard money lender is going to make me put money down. Right. I'm not going to go into. The more this green you are, the more green they want. Ooh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So I'm not going to put money into this. I'm not going to go get away with not putting any money. Like years ago, when you and I first started. Right. It was painful, meaning it was expensive. It was you paid five points and fifteen percent interest, but it was based on the property, and they didn't care about your credit. No, they didn't care about any of that. They pull right? credit now. Yeah. So now it's more of a traditional type of loan with high interest rate. With a high interest rate, right? And it's points just, still there. Yeah, it's still points. Still and you got to put a percentage down. Yeah. So, but again, that goes back to the experience. If you're experienced, which is why, like. A lot of our hard money lenders, or not a lot, several that we know, um, because of our property protege, because of my group coaching, they actually, if you're brand new and you're a member of that, what they do is they use my experience, experience or Chrissy's experience. And they, because, but but we have to be part of that deal. And right. then what happens is they give you um, a better rate. They give you a better rate. You don't have to put as much money down. So even if you're brand new, but you end up because of our experiences, why? Right, right. And that's that's a great that's that's everything right there. Because the more experience you have, which goes back to my original statement, I don't mind hard money, but you have to be experienced because you have to know what you don't like right now you don't know what you don't know. Right. And it could be painful. Yeah, very painful. Yeah, if very I was painful. brand new, like there's been situations where I've seen uh, I, I just had a conversation two days ago with a brand new coaching student and they said, we'll use this company. They came in and said it was going to be a, a $70,000 renovation. And when we were finished, it was 180,000. Double more, than, more double. than double, more than double. And I'm like, how the hell did that happen? They're like, well, just, he just kept coming back saying, this has changed. This has changed. He goes, but when I looked at the scope, he bid on everything. He just said his cost gone kept going up. Well, part of that is their fault for not getting a second and third opinion. Well, it's not saying no. Or not saying, okay, you bid on that. But That's they, not my fault. They, they, they didn't know any better. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. So as, as, as one of our mentors said, they went to another seminar. Yeah, that's a very expensive they paid, seminar. They paid for another seminar. And we're going to keep it moving, and we're going to go right into that next subject. Because this is real popular right now, especially going, in, going into last year. Um, do you like the bird plan or the bird system? And for those who don't know, Don, if you explain it to them. In simple terms, because we know you can go high level. Do I like it? No. And for a couple very simple reasons. Okay. Number one, I was taught from an early or from early on that you do if you can avoid two things, your investment career will be easy. Don't go to the bank and sign on the dotted line and don't write big checks, meaning out of your bank account. So don't go out and buy a bunch of properties spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. And don't go down to the bank and borrow money, okay? Because there are many ways that you can do that without going to a bank. Like, I, I, the last time I was at the bank was 20, 26 years ago. Last time I went to a bank. So the Burr method, very simple. Yeah, and I don't even know what, to, it's buy, maybe you have to help me. Buy. Rehab. Rehab. Rent. Nope. Or refi. Refi. Rent. rent repeat. repeat. Okay. Sounds simple. The problem is, well, the basic premise of it is you buy this rehab and you renovate it, put a tenant in there, you refinance it out and get your money back out of it. Sounds perfectly legit, simple as pie, right? Again, I'm going to go back to, that's because you don't know what you don't know yet. And anytime you put loans in your name, Chances are, especially early on in your career, you're going to pay way too much for that property. And chances are you're listening to someone say, hey, yeah, you can do the Burr method. 
Well, the other thing is what they don't tell you is your credit can only, no matter how good your credit is, you can have an 850 credit score, but you're only going to get a handful of properties before the bank says, no, nope, sorry, you're it. That's it. Done. And who wants to cap their career at four or five properties? Not me. Right. So that's why I don't like it. I don't like anything that puts you at risk because of your 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 limited knowledge. Right. So that's so that's the reason one you you, you want to get educated. But two, a lot of times I've seen um, them break down a deal, and I'm just gonna use this as an instant. The houses ARB is two hundred thousand. Um, they're gonna end up putting twenty percent into it on top of the hard money. Um, because they got to bring it to the table. When they refinance, they refinance at 80%. So, um, but into the house, so 80% of um, 200 is 160, y'all. And you got to, one thing you have to learn is math in this business. It's mandatory, basic mathematics. 160, but after the rehab money and then put money into the deal, they really into it at um, 170. So they only pull out 160 to pay off that loan and put and pay another 10,000 to pay off all their expensive and things. So they in the deal, 10000 Now they got $40,000 equity, but you left your cash in the deal and you had to bring money to the table. And they say, well, that's just going to be equity down the road. Yeah. And how many times you got to put down 20% on a deal? Yeah. Then, then they say, okay, now you're going to go rent it out. And they say, oh, but also you can, instead of, you know, your... Your mortgage being, you know, fourteen hundred, and you making eighteen hundred, you're gonna be able to do an Airbnb with it. But nobody told them that they gotta furnish this house for the Airbnb. Yeah, you gotta pay somebody um, to come clean this Airbnb. So let's go do that again. Now you just create a job for yourself, and you're gonna try to clean it yourself because you're not making that much on it. Now you gotta put cameras in it and watch your Airbnb. And that's my whole point with it. The bird method is is a lot of bullshit. I think it's where they take a bad deal and they try to turn it into a yep. good deal. I agree with by, you. By buying it. And most of the time, the person who's teaching you or who's sharing with you the birth system is one selling the program. And um, and, and it, it's just it's just a mess. And um, I can't even believe it came into existence when I started hearing it. I'm like, this Well, I think totally it came against. into existence, honestly, because... Someone wanted to sell a property that they didn't buy at a good price, and they said, "Well, you can just buy it," because basically most of those burr, you're paying way too much. Right, right, right. Uh, now, I mean, every time I say that, we're gonna get hate for this. I, I don't you know. Yeah, I, 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 they, 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 listen, they hated Jesus. So who am I? I mean, I you, we're gonna get hate for this because there's a lot of investors that that's what they base. That's their base. I mean, I go on TikTok. You know, I've been. I'm, you're a TikToker now. I'm a TikToker now, right? right? right. You, you, Don, and, you are now actually an influencer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I go on there and I listen to all this and they're like, I made millions in real estate. No, you didn't. Not off the Burr method, you didn't. No. Because, and that's the part that bothers me, because you can only get a handful of properties. Otherwise, I mean that just, that method method uh, good for all of you hate for all you people who are gonna throw hate at us. See, Don kind of cares. I don't care. Uh, well, I I just don't feel like dealing with it, right? I know there's the I know comments. There's, I, know there's, comments. There's, I know there's trolls out there. there. There's comments, but they can't get to the house. They can't get to they can't get, they, don't, they don't affect the check. But it, but at the end of the day, you got these guys laying across Lamborghinis, throwing up hundred dollar bills. You know, put them in their little gun, shoots up hundred dollar bills, and at the end of the day. You know, it comes down to print practical reality. Like, right. what can you actually do? Right, right. I mean, I, I get it. There's right. an emotional aspect to this. Right. I get that. Right. People won't... If if you don't have an emotional level at something, you're not going to buy anything. I don't care what it is. I don't right. care if it's a car. So I don't Apple care if stuff it's a house. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Right. There has to be an emotional attachment because people buy on emotion. They justify it later on logic. Right, right. When they so, explain to somebody who mad at them because they bought it. But that's a whole nother subject. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but anyways, yeah. We're going to keep it going and we're going to come to this last question. Again, you're tuned in to the I Couple of Real Estate, Don DeRosa and yours truly, Mr. Tycoon. And the last question was, do you get the deal or the buyer first? And most of time you hear this in the wholesale world. And there are individuals out there who teach, go find the buyer and find out what the buyer wants. 
and then you go find a deal. Well, first of all, finding deals is just not that easy. It's not like you're just taking an order and going to the grocery store. So I totally disagree with that. I believe in finding a deal, and the deal is great enough, the buyers will line up at your door. Because we didn't have stuff like I agree. Um, uh, uh, Craigslist and all the different groups online now, Facebook, um, Marketplace. We didn't. Don, we we was doing stuff via fax. Remember all those fax you sent out of your properties where you want to get into a buy? Not even that. email, fax. I remember that. We've come a long way. Yes, we have. Yeah. Yep. So you totally agree with that? that you get the deal first, not the buyer. Uh, yes, I think. What's the point of having a buyer if you have no deal? I don't know how to find a deal. Right. But I again, mean, you you'll go to a lot of these people that teach this, and the first thing they're going to teach you is. Create your buyer's list. Well, in theory, that's great. Because if I go out and I ask a dozen people where they're interested in buying, and they say, okay, being in Atlanta, I'm going to give you an area. Like Douglasville. Okay? Well, that just kind of points me in the direction of where I should be looking because I have buyers. But what reality is, is that buyer may not even be a real buyer. Right. What well, qualifies them as a buyer? Exactly. Have they bought anything? Or they tire kickers. Exactly. So, I mean, I have people all the time saying, hey, can I put you on my buyer's list? Sure. You can. You and if they're, asking that, if they're asking that of a thousand people, yeah, their, their buyer's list may be a thousand people long, but how many actual buyers? Do you know when I first started this business, I had four people on my buyer's list and I never made it past two because a true buyer, they... When they're when you're when you have a good deal, a good deal they take it. They're gonna take it. Right. So if you're if you have marginal deals, then you need that huge massive yeah. list, or you have not even a good deal. Right. Because you because you're looking that, then at that time you're looking for the greater food theory, somebody who's more foolish than them. Yeah. And I hate to say that to you all, but that's how that's the real deal of this business, and that's what we're here to do is share the real deal with you. Again, this is. This is yours truly, Miss Tycoon, here again with Don DeRosa. And, and just for the record, some of y'all may not know this. Don is a specialist at uh, fix and flip and creative finance and, and also a master at how you do your business from your iPad. So we're going to be having some um, events coming up. And uh, my fastball is wholesaling. Even though I love subject two, I've done probably over 300 Rehab, but you'll never hear me to say that from the stage because I do not like rehab. I do not like Home Depot. I do not like going to pick out cabinets. But I will invest with an investor who um, wants to go do that. So putting your money to work. That's a whole nother subject matter. But today's episode was sponsored by the Odd Couple of Real Estate. Yep, yours truly, Mr. Tycoon and Don DeRose out of our own pocket. And our mission is to make sure that your success in real estate, that's our mission. Our mission is, is your success is our mission when it comes to real estate investing. And I'm going to let Don DeRosa take us out because, again, remember, for me, in order to get your money right, you got to get your mind right. And hopefully this podcast or this video, however you partake of this information, has been um, beneficial to you. So, um, Don DeRosa, well, let him Before go. we go, okay. tell him, uh, let, me, let me back this out. Tell him, uh, let me go back to you. Tell him how they get a hold of you. Oh, or... okay, yeah, please, please. Please follow me at I am Mr. Tycoon on IG. And also, check out my other podcast, Mr. Tycoon Uncut. That's just a podcast. And you can find me at MrTycoon.com if you're interested in learning about wholesaling real estate. Or go to IReallyDoThisShit.com. And if you're really, really serious, go to WorkWithMrTycoon.com and fill out that little form and see the seven deadly sins of real estate investing when it comes to wholesaling. And I'll turn it back over to Don DeRosa. All right. For me, it's simple. Um, I'm going to give you one or two links. You, I have a link tree. Go to DonDeRosa.com. Everything that you can find there. We also do a year-long coaching program for people at PPGCoaching.com. You can see that on the back of my iPad there. But if you want good, solid education and you just want to kind of kick the tires, go to ExpertRealEstateCoaching.com. It's free to get in. It's an online website. And I got to tell you, years ago, I learned this business from, uh, I don't even think it's in existence. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Real, uh, Dealmakers Cafe? No. Nope. Nope. Matt Scott, uh, a friend of mine from many years ago, put that together. And that was uh, that my inspiration here was 
you know, I learned how to do that just through a chat, if you will. Okay. So we put uh, expert real estate coaching out there to bring people together and ask questions. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. If you do want to pay and you need some education, you can jump over to our property or our ppgcoaching.com and we'll spend a whole year with you there. All right. Well, there it is today. That ends this episode. Again, the Odd Couple of Real Estate. Please subscribe and leave your comments. If there's a subject matter you want us to discuss, I promise you, we can um, answer those questions. And if we can't, I promise you, we're on the phone call away from somebody who can that's in our inner circle. So until next time, as always, remember, in order to get your money right, you got to get your mind right. We're never out of message. We're just out of minutes. Until next <laughs> Peace. Time. Peace.